things going on and hated myself. I'd been an anorexic for years, like just was taking it out on myself. And then at that point, when I saw those people, I went uh, like, oh my God. And this is the downtown, this is the voguing. And that's where it all began. Yeah. And, yeah, that's where it all began. Yeah, awesome. And then about 20 or 30 of them at the same time, and they were a house, they were a family. Right. And they brought me right in. Yeah. And that's how my journey with the community began. Yeah. And so that's, speaking about voguing as well, with Diva Rules, you tell us about turning on the TV to see Madonna voguing. And that was like your thing, right? That was, it was like yeah. your cruise thing. Yeah. So, were you angry about that? No. See, there's a chapter in the book called Celebrate Your Competition, because for me, Madonna's been my idol since she came out. She still is to this day. She always has been. So, there was an incident where, when I was in seduction, I, I looked like her. We share a face. I can't help it. So, when my hair was blonde, I looked like her, so her record people called my record people, and Martha, the girl at my record label, called up and she said, I, I, I don't want you to be upset, but Madonna's record people called and said that you were too little too closely resembling her look, and the least you could do is do it well. And I was like, <laughs> and then so they read me, and then Martha's like, are you okay? And I go, Madonna knows who I am! <laughs> That's all I heard in that whole conversation. She has to meet Madonna. I no, and I don't want to yeah. because yeah. I met my idol. My first idol was Belinda Carlisle, and the Go Go's changed my life. And I talk about them in the book because there was this kind of curvy woman who was wearing whatever she wanted and being fabulous and gorgeous, and she was singing in an all-girl band. It was like really cutting edge. So I met her when I was on the RuPaul show on VH1, and she was awful to me, awful. And at that point, I realized. We shouldn't meet our idols sometimes, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. If I met Madonna with, with what I hear people tell me, I don't know if I'd be happy. So I'm happy to admire her from afar. Yeah, I'll I mean, love her forever. I've been in the same room as her. But what's great about it is that um, it's not about how to put on false eyelashes, and it's not about how to do your makeup. I'm sorry if that lets anybody down. <laughs> but it's really about um, how to get the best life that you could possibly get when every motherfucker out there wants to take you down. And that's what the book is about. And I'd like to introduce um, the person who's interviewing with, with me and me and we're gonna have fun with tonight. She's one of my favorite people on earth. She comes all the way from a place called London. Yes, she does. And she's an incredible DJ. She'll be spinning here tonight starting at 10 o'clock. Joni Harsh is here. Oh. Oh. I got my eyelashes and hair and things. But, but for me, it's about being genuine. And a drag queen, to me, is an art form. So it's a performance art to me. And I think what I do is drag. I think what you do is drag. You may not go out and lip sync, but you're a DJ and you put full regalia on. Any person with these beautiful girls with their makeup and their hair, those are drag queens, honey. They are getting done up. And they're not getting done up for anybody but themselves. And if people turn their heads, then they turn their heads. They ain't gonna leave the house until they feel good about themselves. Amen. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Amen. So I think a drag queen is somebody who feels good with the way that they look and they're not afraid to go show it off. Traffic. I'm like, fuck you, I'm not doing traffic. I'm gonna host this bitch. Watch. In a sexist way. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Because they thought that I couldn't do it. I wasn't yeah. worthy. Yeah. You know, and you have to fight sometimes. Yeah. And you have to pick and choose your battles. Don't go through life angry and fighting some of the gays. I know detox is a big one. I'll call her out. If somebody's giving a homophobic thing, and it, sometimes it's not about edu attacking, it's about educating. Because we have enough to fight within this community. You know, we want people to look at us and say, okay, I get it. It's about changing, opening people's minds and changing the world. So I have to go, girl, it's okay, you know? But sometimes I understand, too, that enough is enough, you know? The gay bashing and the homophobia, it's, it's everywhere. As far as we come, as far as we've come, we've come. And, we can get married now in the United States. You know, huge number. But there's other countries that still need us. We still have Northern Ireland that's just spinning their wheels. And poor Russia. I think of Dubai and, and places, I mean, where gay people are at risk just leaving their houses every day. Yeah. So it's a huge start. Yeah. And never in my life did I think I'd be here to see it. So we're on the right path, but we got to keep forging forward. And if we do it with positivity and we do it with love, we're much more able and much more apt to get what we want, you know? Yeah. What do they say? You know, you get more with honey than vinegar. Something like that. I could be have a dog, you know? Because I always hear those stories of like doing, a, if you get a bad hit of acid and like you never come back. Like, I was always afraid of that, so I never, I've never, I've only tried the marijuana. 
And being a former bulimic, it made me eat a dozen donuts. And I went, this is not going to work. So I stopped. And I bought a dime bag myself the first time. Because the kids at school were like, oh, just go down to Washington Square Park and just find somebody. I was like, okay. Not even thinking, this is illegal. I'm just like, hey, can I have a dime bag? I don't even know what that is. Like, I was expecting a bag with dimes in it. Didn't know and then didn't know what to do with it. And they uh, did like an apple pipe or something? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I remembered I ate a lot of donuts and realized this is not good. And let me tell you, can I tell you quickly my alcohol story? Yes. I don't drink. I've gotten drunk four or five times in my life. My mother said, you're going to get drunk the first time at the house, so you know I'm, I'm here for you. So she bought me something in the mid-80s called Calvin Coolers. They were basically like sweetened high C with, with alcohol. Vomited all over the place. Then the second time, I used to drink drinks like Malibu pineapple and Kahlua and cream and black sambuca, anything with a sugar count of 5,000 or higher. And then it was the girl who didn't know she was drunk until she puked. Then after I puked, I was like, oh yeah, party started. Let's go. I'm good. But I also would sleep with everybody. Anybody, everybody. This time I had so much gay man sex because they were drunk in high school. <laughs> then I'd wake up, I've had orgies, I've, you know, been, obviously I've been with tons of women and tons of men. And then I realized, this is probably not good that I'm waking up and not even knowing your name, not even knowing who you are. I went through a huge horror phase, too. And I'm not going to blame that on alcohol, I just, like, did. And, and kind of that's why I stopped drinking, because it was a control issue. And I realized that I didn't like, it was dangerous, it was the... 85, 86, it was like getting the time, you know, things were, AIDS was coming out now, and I was having, I was bareback Betty, honey. We didn't use condoms, no. And I was back in car, bitch, too. Like, give me a back seat, and I'm ready! I uh, didn't know names. Like, I would just have, it bad. See? Hey, man. Hello. Um, so for me, things had to change, so that's why. I don't want people to think, a lot of people think that, like, I'm a friend of Bill, and I support, because I support a lot of the queens, and they try to give up drinking, and I'm there for them, and help them through their sobriety. It's because I've never had to go through the experience, but I support it completely. So anybody who wants to do it, I support it completely. It's a tough journey that you all have in your life. Um, that's it. Support that drag queen. Help in any way that you can. First of all, if you're the mother of a gay child, I... In, a drag mom. Well, as a drag mom, you have a big responsibility. You have to teach that child how to be as draggy as they could be in the right way. But again, you too can look at YouTube and all these things. There's so many resources, but it's up for you to go, that's not working. Let's change that. But when you say that, give them an option to help change it. You know? But it's, it's a big responsibility to be a drag mother, that's why I say no. <laughs> all the drag children in the world are my drag children, but it's, I can't, one-on-one, -on -one, it becomes your name that they're putting out there. It's a big 